Picture this, it's a quiet evening, and you find yourself curled up on the couch, bathed in the warm glow of your old-fashioned TV. The year is 1965, and you stumble upon a movie titled The Sandpipper. The opening credits roll, and the hauntingly beautiful soundtrack starts to play. As the story unfolds on the screen, you're transported to the rugged beauty of the California coastline, where love and rebellion collide in a way that leaves an indelible mark on your memory. The Sandpipper takes you on a journey of self-discovery, challenging societal norms, and the power of an unexpected connection. You can't help but recall the mesmerizing performances of Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, their chemistry so palpable it's almost tangible. The movie's breathtaking cinematography captures the essence of Big Sur, making you feel like you're right there, breathing in the salty sea air and basking in the golden sunlight. Perhaps it's the poignant dialogue that resonates with you, or the evocative scenes that etch themselves into your mind forever. Maybe it's the tender moments shared between the characters, or the thought-provoking themes that make you question the conventions of the time. Whatever it is, The Sandpipper is a cinematic gem that leaves an indelible mark on your soul. Now, let's dive into some fascinating facts about this timeless classic. Facts that you may have never known, but are sure to deepen your appreciation for this cinematic masterpiece. So, grab some popcorn and get ready to be enchanted by the secrets behind The Sandpipper. The working title of the 1965 movie The Sandpipper was originally The Flight of the Sandpipper. This alternate title was used during the early stages of production, but was eventually changed to the more concise The Sandpipper. According to a published report, a redwood sculpture of a new Dame Elizabeth Taylor, which was featured in the film, met an unfortunate fate years later. The sculpture accidentally tipped over and smashed, revealing that it was infested with termites. This unexpected twist of events marked the end of the sculpture's existence. In a humorous twist, the movie The Sandpipper was parodied by artist Mort Drucker and writer Larry Siegel in the March 1966 issue of Mad Magazine, which was titled The Sandpipper. This spoof in the popular magazine added a touch of humor to the film's legacy. These interesting tidbits shed light on different aspects of the Sandpipper, from its initial title to a quirky incident involving a sculpture, and even its presence in the world of satire. Each of these details contributes to the unique history of this 1965 movie. The 1965 movie The Sandpipper was filmed on location on the central coast of California, specifically in Big Sur and Monterey. This scenic backdrop added to the film's natural beauty, showcasing the rugged coastline and breathtaking landscapes of the region. Interestingly, according to Sammy Davis Jr. in his movie memoir Hollywood in Suitcase, he was originally offered the role of Koss Erickson in the film and even signed the contract. However, he had to withdraw from the project when his Golden Boy stage show opened earlier than expected. This twist of fate led to the casting of Charles Bronson in the role. Additionally, the then-unknown Rockle Welch doubled for Dame Elizabeth Taylor in some of her beach scenes in The Sandpipper. This happened during the on-location filming at Big Sur, California, where the rugged terrain posed challenges for the production. In conclusion, The Sandpipper is not only remembered for its compelling storyline, but also for its stunning on-location filming in California. The unexpected change in casting and the uncredited appearance of Rockle Welch is a body double. These behind-the-scenes tidbits add an intriguing layer to the film's history. In 1965, The Sandpipper hit the silver screen, and it managed to rake in profits at the box office. But despite its financial success, it didn't win many hearts among critics. Vincent Minnelli directed the film, which turned out to be his last for Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. Sadly, it's often considered his worst work, despite its money-making prowess. One shining moment for the movie was Johnny Mandel's song, The Shadow of Your Smile. It clinched an Oscar, making it the film's sole claim to critical acclaim. This song went on to become one of Mandel's most recognizable compositions. The movie also featured a notable location called Nepenthe, aptly named from the Greek word meaning drug of forgetfulness. This spot, a set built for the film, replicated an actual local restaurant that had been open since 1949. In a nutshell, The Sandpipper of 1965 was a financial success, but a critical disappointment. Its only saving grace was Johnny Mandel's Oscar-winning song and the intriguing Nepenthe location. Vincent Minnelli's directorial career at Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer ended on a less-than-stellar note with this film. 
In 1965, The Sandpipper hit the silver screen, bringing together the dynamic duo of Dame Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton for the third time in their careers. However, what many might not know is that the script was initially intended for a different leading lady. Kim Novick was originally envisioned as the star until a disagreement with producer Martin Ransohoff led to her departure from the project. Director Vincent Minnelli had other casting ideas too. Before offering the roles to the Burtons, he considered Burt Lancaster and Deborah Kerr, hoping to recreate their on-screen chemistry from From Here to Eternity. Ultimately, the film found its iconic pairing in Taylor and Burton. So, while The Sandpipper is remembered for its passionate performances by the Burtons, it's fascinating to think about how the casting could have been quite different had it not been for these behind-the-scenes twists and turns. In 1965, the movie The Sandpipper made waves in Hollywood, with some interesting behind-the-scenes details. One notable fact is that Richard Burton tried to avoid taking part in the film but could it do to contractual obligations? This attempt to back out added a layer of intrigue to the production. The movie's producer, Martin Ransohoff, originally had different plans. He wanted Richard Burton to direct Dame Elizabeth Taylor in this property, is condemned. When that plan fell through, Ransohoff managed to convince the iconic duo to star in The Sandpipper instead. Taylor earned a hefty salary of $1 million, while Burton received $500,000 which played a pivotal role in sealing the deal. These contract negotiations and last-minute changes added drama off-screen, enhancing the anticipation for what would unfold on screen in The Sandpipper. Fading Stardust, the emotional turmoil of The Sandpipper's cast coping with depression The 1965 movie The Sandpipper isn't just a classic film. It's a window into the emotional struggles of some of its cast members. One cast member in particular faced the harsh reality of the fleeting nature of fame and the toll it can take on mental health. The spotlight of Hollywood can be blinding, and for some, it's not all glitz and glamour. One of the Sandpipper's cast members experienced a deep depression during and after the film's production. While IMDb doesn't give us a name, it's clear that the pressures of fame contributed to their mental health struggles. The fleeting nature of fame can be harsh. After basking in the glory of a successful film like The Sandpipper, the cast member found themselves grappling with depression. The constant pressure to maintain their status in the industry took a toll on their mental well-being. In the 1960s, discussing mental health was often taboo in Hollywood. The entertainment industry placed immense pressure on its stars to project an image of perfection, leaving little room for vulnerability. This cast member's struggle with depression was hidden behind closed doors. It's a tragic reminder of the toll secrecy and the relentless pursuit of fame can take on a person's mental health. While the cast member may have been adored on screen, behind the scenes, they were battling their inner demons. This story sheds light on the importance of breaking the stigma around mental health in Hollywood. The entertainment industry has come a long way in addressing these issues, but there's still work to be done. Silencing the struggles can have devastating consequences, as seen in the case of the Sandpipper's cast member. In the end, fame can be a double-edged sword, bringing adoration and despair in equal measure. The Sandpipper may be a classic film, but it also serves as a poignant reminder of the emotional turmoil that can accompany a life in the spotlight. Love and Loss, the tragic romances of the Sandpipper's cast in old Hollywood in 1965. The movie The Sandpipper graced the silver screen, featuring an ensemble cast that included Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. While the film itself garnered attention for its stunning coastal scenery, and passionate love story, it also became a footnote in the annals of old Hollywood's tumultuous romances. Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, the stars of The Sandpipper, ignited a fiery off-screen love affair that captured the world's attention. Both were already married to other people at the time, adding a layer of scandal to their passionate relationship. The public couldn't get enough of their torrid romance, making headlines, and drawing paparazzi wherever they went. Taylor and Burton's affair wasn't the only storm brewing in the cast. Eva Marie Saint, who played a pivotal role in the film, was struggling with her own personal battles. The constant glare of the spotlight took a toll on her mental health, leading to a battle with depression that she bravely faced during and after filming The Sandpipper. The overwhelming attention and scrutiny faced by the cast members were not without consequences. 
The bright lights of Hollywood often cast long shadows, and these actors found themselves grappling with personal demons amidst the glitz and glamour. The affair between Taylor and Burton was particularly heartbreaking for fans who adored them both. The sense of betrayal felt by the public was palpable, as the beloved star's actions shattered the illusion of their perfect lives. Many fans found it difficult to reconcile the on-screen romance in the sandpaper with the real-life drama unfolding in the tabloids. Behind the scenes, the cast's agents played a role in fanning the flames of these personal dramas. The dark side of Hollywood representation, driven by financial gain and personal agendas, added another layer of complexity to the lives of those involved with the sandpaper. In the end, the sandpaper may be remembered for more than just its cinematic qualities. It serves as a stark reminder of the love and loss that often accompanied the stars of old Hollywood, the toll of exhaustion on the cast, the battle with depression, the sense of betrayal among fans, and the influence of agents on their lives. In a world where the line between reality and fiction can blur, the stories behind the sandpaper serve as a poignant reflection of the highs and lows of fame and love in the golden era of Hollywood. As we bid adieu to the timeless classic, The Sandpipper, I encourage you to take a moment to let the echoes of this cinematic masterpiece linger in your thoughts. This 1965 gem, starring Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, is more than just a film. It's a journey through the sun-drenched vistas of Big Sur and the tumultuous terrain of human emotions. The Sandpipper isn't merely a story about forbidden love. It's a reflection of the human spirit, a tale of defiance against societal norms, and an exploration of the breathtaking beauty of the California coast. It invites us to question our own boundaries, to ponder the choices we've made, and to embrace the exquisite complexities of life and love. Now, I invite you to share your treasured memories and thoughts about the sandpaper. Did the lush landscapes transport you to a different world? Did the magnetic chemistry between Taylor and Burton leave an indelible mark on your heart? Or perhaps, it's the film's hauntingly beautiful soundtrack that still resonates with you. Your unique connection with this cinematic masterpiece is a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. So, take a moment to share your thoughts, relive those cherished moments, and celebrate the magic of the sandpaper. Thank you for your time and interest in this cinematic journey. Your engagement makes this experience all the more enriching. Until we meet again, keep the love for film alive, and your memories of the sandpaper burning brightly. Warm regards.